Hey nerds, my goal today is to make a beautiful drawer cart for the Dawn theme. Whatever I wind up with, I will put in a GitHub repo available below. Um, you can try it yourself if you're feeling very sassy. The rest of this video will be about the process of making it. My favorite drawer cart is on allbirds.com. And I can be influenced by this design as much as I like. I mean, look how pretty that is. Are you kidding me? Out of my way, lady. I'm trying to look at this car. No! I gotta interrupt this lighthearted misogyny because I just edited that video and it was so long and so boring that I simply cannot. So I'm gonna try again, leave off the debugging stuff and try to keep this a high level overview. First of all, why make a cart at all? Why not just install an app? They have drawer cart apps that have some upsell features built into them. You might be interested in those. Um, I had a look at the demos real quick, and my only problem is that they look a bit gross. So I'm going to make my own. Um, mine is not going to have any upsell features. I have to limit the scope of my ambition here. but. Um, if you imagine that Dawn just came with a drawer cart, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. I found a JavaScript library called GoCartJS. The demo looks like this. Very basic, but I like it as a starting point. The installation instructions are pretty good. The part of installation that caused the most havoc was step number five. They tell you to add this ID to your add to cart form and you know the dawn form already has an id on it so i replaced it with this and of course that broke a lot of things because dawn already had javascript targeting the old id so you got to make sure if you're going to update this id to update it everywhere there's another wrinkle to this which is that dawn actually has two add to cart forms on the product page. So we can find one form up here, sort of above the, um, the options. And it has these input, uh, hidden input elements in it. There's another form down here, another add to cart form. They both, they both submit to, um, the cart. This form also has these same, uh, hidden input elements. And when you change the options, the variant ID here gets updated in both forms. Now, <laughs> why didn't they just make all of this a single add to cart form in Dawn? I don't make themes for Shopify, so I don't know why they made that choice. I'm sure there's a reason, but I don't know what it is. The point being, if you try to use GoCart with Shopify, really kick the tires after installation. Make sure that your quantity works. Make sure that you can't add things to the cart that aren't in stock. Make sure that your error reporting still works because all that stuff broke for me. Uh, that's not really GoCart's fault. That's just getting these things to play nicely with each other doesn't always go smoothly. Also, when you install GoCart, the little cart icon that opens the cart, this is coded as just a div. You can see it here. And so if I were to disable JavaScript on this page, this button would no longer do anything. So after installing uh, GoCart, I made sure to go back and restore uh, Dawn's original shopping bag icon, but also to make sure that I restalled the coding style of that icon because Dawn codes it as a link, which is important because with a link, if somebody doesn't have JavaScript, it will gracefully fall back to sending you to the cart page. One thing I noticed is that sizes can be confusing without context. GoCart will display an item's variant title property, which is like this. And because sizes can be full words or a single letter or a number, 
um, I think it's important to put the word size in front of a size. You'll notice all birds does this, and I think it's smart. So I needed to write a little formatting function to use the items options with values property. Get in there, find the option called size, and just make sure it has the word size in front of it. Speaking of formatting, go-kart came with the dollar sign hard-coded in front of money values. I want to use the symbol of whatever currency the customer's cart is in. Um, in theme.liquid, there's an area where Dawn takes all of these values that are available in liquid and makes them available to JavaScript by assigning those values to JavaScript variables. I needed to do some of that myself. Here I'm taking the symbol of the customer's cart, whether it's a dollar sign, a pound sign, whatever, making sure I grab that so I can use it here. And I'm also grabbing the ISO code so that in my case, the code is USD so that I can put that here. I think that's important to add to the subtotal for clarity. This little taxes and shipping message comes directly from Dawn's cart page right here. Uh, the code that generates that uh, is in main cart footer liquid. It's right here. It looks like it would actually put different text on the screen depending on the, um, the options that you've set up for your store. A customer should never have to go to your cart page if your drawer cart is well designed. So I felt it was important to carry over this clarifying message. Okay, at this point in the process, things were looking good, but I wanted to give some thought to keyboard accessibility. There is a really cool function in Dawn called Trap Focus. Let's see what we can do with it. If we look at a ordinary installation of Dawn, we add an item to the cart, we get their little pop-up. If I hit tab, you'll notice that the focus has already been shifted to the pop-up. Keep hitting tab, get to the bottom. I go back up to the top of just that little window. So we have trapped focus in this pop-up. This is really cool, especially for a drawer cart. When you open the cart, the background of the page is grayed out, which is a visual indication that it's supposed to be inaccessible. So I would like to trap the user's focus within the drawer cart until they close it. Let's see how Allbirds handles this. We'll, uh, just add a product. Okay, I'm going to start hitting tab. It did successfully shift my focus into the cart. I'm going to tab all the way to the bottom. And now you'll notice that my focus has shifted to these page elements in the background that really shouldn't be accessible to me. Let's look at another drawer cart out in the wild. I've just added a product to my, to my cart, start hitting tab. It doesn't even initially place the focus into the drawer cart. I don't even see it tabbing through DOM elements in the background. So it looks like there was no thought given to keyboard accessibility of this particular drawer cart. So let's look at my implementation. I add something to the cart, hit tab, shifts focus into the cart, get to the bottom, and it goes right back up to the top again. I just use Dawn's trap focus and remove trap focus functions to do this. If I close out of the cart and start hitting tab, it takes me back up to the top of the page. That's exactly how I think it should behave. The last screw to tighten is screen reader accessibility. Screen readers do a fine job of reading things like this button at the bottom that have descriptive text in them in the HTML. 
but we've got elements in our cart like the close cart button, the remove item from cart, decrease and increase quantity. None of these things naturally have text in them in the HTML. So I just made sure to add ARIA labels to all of these things. This one has an increase quantity ARIA label, remove item from cart ARIA label. Um, we can try opening Max uh, VoiceOver and uh, just sort of tab through our cart and see what it reads to us, right? Decrease quantity button, increase quantity button, remove item from cart. The other thing I did here was I took, let me close VoiceOver, I took um, the product name and description and just wrapped that in a link tag. So this is all one sort of thing. If I roll over it, both parts get underlined. And so if you're tabbing through, that's treated as one chunk, which I thought just made things a little quicker and smoother. And if you're having a screen reader read it to you, it's all going to read this to you as one chunk. That was just a decision I made. I'm not exactly sure if it's right. It would actually be really interesting to talk to somebody who needs a screen reader and see what kind of things <laughs> they hate and what kind of things they like. Um, but for now, I just tried to make some sensible assumptions. So that's the card. It's super basic. There are no options whatsoever. If you want to try it, I'll put a link with instructions below. Um, it's the first card I ever made, so good luck. If you have any feedback, you can yell at me in all caps in the comments. I'm out of here.